it's hydraulic cylinder rebuild time. This is the hydraulic cylinder off of my uh, log splitter, the one that I did the video on that had the, uh, the lift arm on the side. The main cylinder, even though it has virtually no hours on it, for some reason the main rod seal has been weeping a little bit while it's sitting. So, ordered a new seal kit. Let's put it in. So this is what's called a tie rod cylinder because it has these tie rods that hold on. You got a, a machine tube in the middle and they just put these two end caps on versus what's called a welded cylinder and these are usually for you know high production applications where the machine manufacturer um, needs the same thing over and over and over custom size custom bore everything else and it gets cheaper in the long run to do these versus these where these are cheaper just to do you know onesie twosies here and there for Joe Schmo a um, little bit of a difference the easiest thing about these is you just take off bolts and it just comes apart. These, since they're welded, um, things like the uh, the clevises on the end, you can't take off, you can't interchange. Where a lot of these, like this one just screws off, you put different clevises on. Um, this one you can see actually got messed up and I actually had to cut the clevises off of this and welded it on actually one of these cylinders um, to make it work for my application. But the other thing is, is to disassemble these there's a couple different ways. This one just had a, uh, a snap ring right down in here that just held this in, which was on this shaft. Others will have a hole with a wire that's actually threaded around all the way in the inside, just like a snap ring all the way in there, and there'll just be a little end sticking out, and you just pull that, and you just kind of rotate the wire all the way out, and then this will come out, and then this whole assembly comes out. But let's take this one apart and do the seals. I got my clevis screwed off, like I said. And now I'm able to actually pull my um, seals right off the top. Where with the welded cylinder, with the welded on clevis, you're not able to do that. You actually have to take off the bottom nut down here to be able to do it. And these bottom nuts are on there good. I mean, they need to be torqued around 500 foot pounds, different ones. This one's 463. But they're all around there. If they're, this is a four-inch cylinder. If it's a, something like a five-inch cylinder, it's probably around 1,200 foot-pounds. So it's up there. I'm going to try just to take off my top without disturbing. You know, being a welded, uh, being a tie rod cylinder, there's actually seals sealing this um, this plate to the tube, and I got the same thing down on the other end. And I don't necessarily want to disturb the other end if I don't have to because it's not leaking. So I'm going to try just to take this off and I can take it right off the top. So I've already cleaned up my uh, my end right here and I've taken a piece of steel wool just to make sure there's nothing right there. But I'm also gonna tape over my threads really fast. There's a seal around here as well. This is your main pressure seal that, you know, fluid comes in this way, pushes it this way. Fluid comes in the top in this chamber pushes the rod that way but we'll just inspect this whole shaft I, I I could I inspected it before it came out but there's no nicks or anything else on it um, so I'll look it over really good but we should be good and this cylinder is actually so new there's actually really no point in me even changing this but I might do it just 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 for fun it looks really good in there so we should be good to go hardest thing is just keeping everything clean now these aren't typical seals that you would see in the automotive industry. Um, they like to wedge them in from the sides. So let's see if we can dig one out. So instead of having a seal that's just kind of hammered in, they're actually just inserted into a groove and set aside. So there's our wiper and then we'll have a seal behind it back in the block that's this blue and that's the same thing it will try to get behind it there we go Oops. so this is more than likely what's leaking the seal right here is the culprit so easy enough we got two new ones in here that we'll be able to replace and that's all that's in there so now it's just a matter of cleaning it way up. I'll probably put a new O-ring seal around the outside right here after I clean all this up. 
and the O-ring seal is just an O-ring. But this is definitely a, an improved, bigger groove with it, more of a lip. So we'll just be able to put that in, pinch it in the middle. Roll it in, there we go. That seal's in. Put my front wiper in. And that just keeps the uh, keeps the other seals clean by wiping out all the junk right off the front. So there we go, there we go. There we go, that's rebuilt. So I inspected my main uh, seal on my piston, and it's actually in really good condition, so I'm not going to change it out. And they've given me a, a three-piece seal to replace it with um, a middle piece and then two wipers. But I'll show you what it's like on this uh, smaller cylinder right there. And on this one, what they've done is they've just given like a, a basic O-ring in the middle, and then there's just a wiper on each side. And it's just a matter of a tedious of pulling each one off and actually without destroying them, you know, putting the new ones on. It's a little tricky, but and they and they seem like they're almost stretched out after you get them on. But you'll get them on. I wouldn't do it in a super cold environment, but I will also probably wouldn't heat. I wouldn't heat them up, but they're pretty pliable. Even this junk one. And what happened to this cylinder right here, if you're wondering, is this somebody, the nut on the bottom didn't get torqued. And so the nut fell off. So the piston fell off on the inside. And the rod went around and just flopped around. And so it came completely off. And then it just was flopping in there and just scratched the crap out of everything else. And then because this came off, there was no pressure, you know. But it just banged everything up, so had to get a new a new one it's all lubed up nicely a little bit of oomph right, I've just got it tipped up the rod all the way pushed in, that means the chamber in front of the piston. If the rod was all the way out, I'd feel the back port. But I'll just fill this all the way up with hydraulic fluid. all day dry as a bone can't ask for anything more thanks for watching don't forget to thumbs up if you want to watch the video on how I made this little lift arm for the side of the log splitter I'll put a link right after here go click on that that's a fun video thanks for watching guys see you soon bye